gathered every fray who means a damn thing. So I can tell you my plans now that winter has come. The cold open wasn't initially the cold open. We had organized the episode a bit differently. But when we saw David's performance and seeing the subtle moves that he made to not quite be Walder Frey, but to start as Walder Frey and then become Arya Stark, that made us realize that this was the best way to open the episode in the season. It's not just about killing this one guy, because he might have ordered the assassination on her family, but all these other Freys carried it out. She needs to send a message, which is that the North remembers. Tell them winter came for House Frey. One of the moments I love in episode one is Rory's performance as the Hound, where he sees the bodies of the farmer and the little girl that he left to die, and sure enough, they both died in a very unpleasant way. I'd say they were starving, and rather than let his little girl suffer, he ended it for both of them. He shows you the changes he's undergone as a human being. And four seasons ago, never would have thought about burying the bodies of some people that he somehow felt responsible for. He mugged the guy, you know, and stole his money and left him penniless on the brink of winter. So I think he's dealing with this unusual emotion for him of guilt, which he's not really experienced with, and it's a bit of a torment. And the only thing he can do really is bury their bodies and try to say some words over their grave. We asked the father to judge us with mercy, and I don't remember the rest. He doesn't believe in religion. He doesn't like religion anyway, but he can't deny the facts of what he's seen. He's seen Thoros raise Beric from the dead. So for the Hound, he wants to know what does this god want? Part of him hates it because he thinks these people are fanatics and dull and gullible. But at the same time, he can't deny the truth of what he sees. And part of that truth now is seeing these visions in the flames. What do you see? There's a mountain. Looks like an arrowhead. The dead are marching past. Thousands of them. We end last season with Littlefinger telling Sansa that she deserves a bigger role in the governance of the North. Who should the North rally behind? A true-born daughter of Ned and Catelyn Stark, born here at Winterfell, or a motherless bastard born in the South? Jon Snow, the bastard, is declared king in the North, whereas Sansa Stark, who is actually a Stark, she's just left to the side. And I think there's a little bit of resentment of that. She feels that she's responsible in many ways for winning the Battle of the Bastards, because she's the one who got the Knights of the Vale to come north and join the fight. She feels like she hasn't gotten quite enough credit for that. And she also feels that sometimes Jon's a little bit naive. You've been so consumed with the enemy to the north, you've forgotten about the one to the south. Consumed with the Night King because I've seen him. And believe me, you'd think of little else if you had to. We still have a wall between us and the Night King. There's nothing between us and Cersei. It's not so much that he dismisses Cersei as a threat long term, but right now the imminent threat is the Night King and the Army of the Dead. Winter has come. He knows that makes travel very difficult. The idea that Cersei is going to lead the Lannister army up this far north, which has never been done before and which is probably you know beyond her capabilities, doesn't really concern him. You're the military man, but I know her. If you're her enemy, she'll never stop until she's destroyed you. All that's ever mattered to Cersei is her children. And in relatively short order, Cersei has lost all of her children. She now is in a very dark place, and all she really has left is power for the sake of power. What is Cersei without her children? What prevents her from being a monster? And the answer is nothing. Jamie really wants her to engage with what's happened to them both. And these are things she can't afford to even entertain, really, because if she starts going there, it's going to be a long, long fall. Should we spend our days mourning the dead, mother, father, and all our children? Cersei. I loved them. I did. But the ashes now, and we're still flesh and blood. We're the last Lannisters, the last ones who count. For her now, at this point, it's about survival. And the only way to survive is to defeat her enemy. She'll do whatever she has to do to win. She'll blow up the Sept if that will allow her to win, even though it means killing hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of innocent people. She's capable of anything. Unlike Danny, who's constrained a little bit by her morality and her fear of hurting innocence. For those of us who have been with the story from the beginning and who have really followed Danny's journey, Coming home is such a massive game changer on so many levels, and we just wanted to see that. There's so much weight on that arrival that we felt that a bunch of 
dialogue was completely unnecessary and would only step on the emotion of the moment. Everyone's giving her a little bit of distance. You know, Tyrion, who's usually the most loquacious of people, he's not talking because he wants her to experience it. And you know, at one point, Grey Worm's about to kind of walk up alongside Danny to guard her, and Misande holds him back because she wants Danny to experience this on her own. And then she has the time, and then she's ready to begin.